<laughs> it's funny. You know, you would think that tis the season to be jolly, that people would kind of get the message that, hey, you know, I understand you got all these rules and regulations, you know. And believe me, I live in a an apartment complex that goes way out of its way to push down and suppress all the joy and the love and the peace that people have at this time of year, that they force you into shoving everything inside and you can't demonstrate your joy in any way or manifestation of it outside because that might cause oh the owners to be upset. And it's kind of like what the world does, you know? The world, right now, Satan has control over. I mean, he's technically the god of this world, you know? I mean, he, he doesn't really like it when Christians get happy. Because, you know, one of the biggest problems about a joyful Christian is that it's contagious. <laughs> That's why the angels came and said, Behold, I bring you glad tidings of great joy, which shall be to all men, that unto you, born this day in the city of David, a Savior, even Christ the Lord, and that he shall be a salvation, and that he would save his people from their sins. And, you know, the shepherds, who were the only ones who were really kind of paying attention at the time, you know, they were out doing their thing, you know, and they said, hey, this is cool, man. First of all, an angel visits us, tells us, good news, man, I got some good news for you. Here's the good news, and there is no bad news. <laughs> it's like, okay. So shepherds go, wow, cool. Maybe we ought to go check this out. <laughs> and they said, behold, I, you know, you'll find him in swaddling clothes, you know, in a manger. You know? And I said, yeah, well, I can deal with that. It's free. <laughs> I mean, after all, we are shepherds. I mean, come on. You know, it's not like we want to go in the city, you know. So they went. They checked it out, you know, and they found him eventually, you know, it wasn't like they found him overnight, you know, they had to kind of take care of the sheep, you know. And when they did, they were awestruck, amazed. And you know, good news can do that for you. Being positive in a very uplifting way can cause wonder to happen to people that aren't used to being encouraged, maybe that aren't really ready to be told that, hey, it's okay, you know, I understand you don't feel good, I know you're having problems, but guess what, God's in control, <laughs> Jesus is alive, you know, we're Christians, man, you know, we got it, we got it covered, you know, there's no problem here, you know, it's nothing so big that it can't be handled by God himself, and God promised, Maybe you didn't know this, but he promised he'd take care of you. Well, <laughs> if he'll do it, what are you doing? <laughs> I mean, if you're having problems, maybe it's because you're trying to take care of it yourself rather than letting him take care of it. It's just my personal opinion. I mean, me, I've been given all my life things I couldn't handle. You know, they were bigger than I am. You know, you know that old false Christian, you know, statement that people run around saying God won't give you anything bigger than you can handle? Yes, he will. <laughs> My whole life has been about things bigger than I can handle. As a matter of fact, that's why he gave us the scripture that says there's no temptation. This is the actual scripture that people get. God won't give you anything bigger than you can handle. Now think about this. I'm going to tell you what the scripture says and then tell you what people changed it into being just so you know kind of how it balance the two. The scripture says, There has no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but will, with the temptation, also make a way to escape that you be able to bear it. Okay. Temptation. Bigger, you know, every, common to man. Got it. But God is faithful. Okay, we got that. God is faithful and we're going to get temptations that's, you know, common to man. Well, I think we understand that, you know, and kind of like, okay, we kind of get this down. So temptations are coming. Maybe that's why Jesus said, lead us not to temptation. But anyway, anyways, so temptations common to man. God is faithful, you know, and he won't, what, suffer us to be tempted above that you're able. But, and see, that's where people stop. They don't add the but. 
You know, it's like maybe they're trying to get rid of that kind of exterior, posterior. I don't know. Maybe they're trying to trim it down. <laughs> they cut the scripture in half and said, I'm only taking the first part. But he says, but will also provide a way as escape that you be able to bear it. Oh, so we can't deal with it. So whenever we can't, he wants us to take the way of escape that we'd be able to bear it. So now what do people say? God won't give you nothing bigger than you can handle. Yes, he will. If you don't take his way of escape, it's bigger than you can handle. So I think sometimes what happens with good news is they forget the great news of all the news is good when we take it to God and receive from him all of his word as opposed to part of his word. Because you see, when man gets involved, he's always got a process. He's got to cut it up, put it into pieces, make it fit here and fit there and work here and work there and work this and work that and kind of get like, you know, in a situation and put yourselves in a conflict of interest, kind of like where I am today. You know, I want to celebrate. I want to enjoy the season of our joy. This Christmas year that we can celebrate and celebrate Hanukkah. We can celebrate Kwanzaa. We can celebrate Christmas. We can do Santas. We can do Rudolphs. We can do Frosty the Snowman's. But you know, I'm told that I have to stick it in my ear and stick it inside, you know. And, huh. By golly, I think I need to move. <laughs> so, Lord willing, <laughs> you know where I'm going. Praise the Lord, you know, because God always blesses you wherever you are. And if my last place that I resided, the owner of the apartment complex at the time told us we couldn't put plants out. So when I did, they were so impressed with the plants, they were beautiful, that they came and said, no, we want you to put them out, you know. Matter of fact, if you want more plants, go ahead. Go figure. The ones that started to be so wrong about it turned out to be so right about it. Praise the Lord. I figure that as soon as I'm gone, maybe they'll have a big Christmas celebration here next year. <laughs> but, Lord willing, who knows? God is the only one who can direct your life. God is the only one who can bless your life. What you can do is, in response to him, enjoy your life. For such as it is, Wherever you are, you can still have the joy of the season. My wife and I enjoy, even when we're challenged by oppressive rules and regulations, when people try to press you down without measure, and you're compressed by all these seemingly disadvantageous things around you, then you just go inside and you rejoice in the Lord together with what you're doing. And so we have taken our conflicts and made them opportunities to rejoice in. I mean, James said that, count it all joy, my brethren, when you fall into diverse trials and tribulations, knowing that the working of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work. So while I comply with what I'm told to do, I rejoice in knowing that what God's going to do is so much greater than what I'm being told temporarily I have to do. So if you find yourself in some kind of Christmas conflict, you know, don't fight the system. Overcome the system, because that's what Jesus said. You can overcome by the word of your testimony, which is your life, by loving not their lives even to death, and by overcoming by the blood of the Lamb. You're saved. What are you worried about? Go forward and rejoice in it. Rejoice in your circumstances. Rejoice in the love that God has given you. Rejoice in the season of our joy that we can celebrate this time, this place, this year. The very fact that not only are we alive, but we can celebrate Jesus any way we want to. You don't have to fear Santa. <laughs> you don't have to fear Rudolph. You don't have to fear Christmas trees. You don't have to fear landlords. You don't have to fear the government. You don't have to fear anyone. As a matter of fact, God loves you so much, His perfect love will cast out all your fear. 
and you could turn to Him for your salvation every single circumstance of your life. So matter of fact, I would challenge you in the name of the Lord Jesus that you would take whatever it is you're facing today, just today, let's just try it for one day. You let me know if it don't work <laughs> or if God doesn't come through. But today, whatever it is that's causing some kind of conflict for you that's tearing you down and weighing you down and just you know really making it a bummer of a day for you, See if you can't ask Jesus to turn it around before the day is over. Today, seriously, I'm right now saying, try it. If it don't work, hey, walk away from being a Christian, because by golly, if God can't answer your prayers, who can? I mean, who are you going to turn to? Ghostbusters? <laughs> yeah, right. What are you going to do? Sue people because you want to celebrate something? Yeah, right. That don't work. Sooner or later, it's going to come back on you anyways. Rather, Take it to the Lord in prayer and leave it there and watch God be your salvation. And man, I tell you, all the times that I have done that, I have seen people who have done things to me, said things to me, and challenged me in ways that I didn't defend myself. Boy, did God come through like a flood. Woo! I'm glad I wasn't in their shoes because, man, I have lived long enough to see His salvation when I turn it over to Him to do as He chooses. Right or wrong, turn it over to God and believe me, He'll be strong on your behalf. Because you don't need to defend yourself. You need to contend with the reality that God is living and alive and wants to be strong on your behalf. Perfect love casts out fear. 1 John 4.18 Love and fear cannot dwell together. By their very nature, they cannot exist side by side. Evil is powerful and fear is one of the evil's most potent forces. Therefore, a weak, vacillating love can soon be routed by fear, whereas a perfect love, a uh, trusting love, is immediately the conqueror, and fear, vanquished, flees in confusion. But I am love because God is love, and I and the Father are one, so the only way to obtain this perfect love that dispels fear is to have me more and more in your life. You can only banish fear by my presence and by my name, by the very fact of who I am, Jesus. Fear the future, Jesus will be with us. Fear of poverty, Jesus will provide. And so all the temptations of fear, whether they be a provision of life, of death, of anything other than the reality of knowing Jesus, and you need fear nothing at all. You must not allow fear to enter. Talk to me. Walk with me. Think of me. Talk of me. Love me. And that sense of my power and the presence of my Holy Spirit will so possess you that no fear can possess your mind. Be strong in this, my love, for in the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. So, really, no matter what you're going through, whether you're being told to shut down your Christmas or hide it in some place, you know, removed from sight, whether you're being told to, you know, don't don't say Merry Christmas but Happy Holidays as though some big fight were going on, don't worry about it. Give in if you want to. Don't make it an issue that's not an issue. But give it to God and watch how He takes that issue of yours and makes it his strong hand that will deliver you from the power of the evil one to cause you some consternation in a time when it should be celebration of what you're doing. Enjoy it. God is with you. And because he's with you, it don't matter if it's a Santa, a Frosty, a Hanukkah, a Christmas, or a Kwanzaa, because God is with you. No matter where you go, you're the light of the world. You're the salt of the earth. You have the good news in you. The fact that you're joyful <laughs> is going to blow people's minds. They don't know how to handle it. Perfect love? Huh. What are you going to worry about? Yeah, you know what? I was going through some really tough times this year. You know, I was told I couldn't do this, I couldn't do that, so I turned it over to God, and by golly, you know what? By the end of the day, He made it work out His way. So, do that today. Take the challenge of the day and turn it over to God and watch Him do it His way and not your way.